dependency injection has a new feature in .NET 8. Specifically, we can have keyed services, allowing us to have more than one implementation of an interface and interact with that very easily. Let's see how they work in this 10 minute training video. Now, for most of my training, I work to give an in-depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need the quick answer to the question, how do I use this? That's why I created this 10 minute training series. So let's get in here and look at what I have set up. This is a Blazor web application that is only doing Blazor server and Blazor server side rendered. It's not doing WebAssembly, it's not doing auto. The reason for that is because it's just simplicity. You don't have to have two projects now, just one. And I have set up in here a messages folder. And in here, I have one interface. The interface is I interaction messages. And of course, this is just a demo, but we have one method in here called greeting. And let's see the implementation of these greetings. We have the formal messages, which says greetings, my fellow traveler. And we have the informal messages, which is, hey, what's up? And we may have times when we want to give a formal greeting, and we may have times where we want to be informal with our users. So we have both services, but they both implement the same interface. We want to put both of these in dependency injection. Now, to be clear, this has been possible forever with dependency injection. It's just that what we used to do is put more than one service in our dependency injection and then get an array of services back when we asked for that particular service or the first one. So we either have the first one or an array of services. Now we can be a little more selective. So let's say builder.services.addkeyed. And we have all the same choices, but it says add keyed scope, add keyed singleton, and add keyed transient. We're going to choose singleton because that's what this is, is a singleton. And we're going to say that this is a I interaction messages, which adds the using directive. And then we're going to add formal messages. And then in here, we're going to put the key. We're going to say formal for now. Now, this is a string. We're going to use string for a minute, and then we're going to go back and fix this to be uh, something else. So we can duplicate this line and say informal messages. And we'll call this relaxed. Okay. You don't have to name it the same thing as the, as the class or anything like that. Just pick a name for it. Okay. So now we have these two in here as keyed singletons. How do you ask for them? Well, let's create a, a new class and we're gonna call this a uh, demo because this, this is just to show off how you would ask for it. So in here, I create a constructor. And in the constructor, normally I would just ask for the, the I interaction messages and it would give me the correct one. But now with two in there, how do I ask for it? Well, we say from keyed services and then we put in here the key. So relaxed. And then we say I interaction messages and say messages. And that's how we ask for the dependency that is the relaxed version of the dependency. So we have two different services that implement the I interaction messages, and we just ask for whichever one we want. Now, I mentioned that, you know, the, having strings is not the best usually. And so I created an enum called service enums which is message type dot formal message type dot relaxed. Well, we can come back over here and change this from formal. Let's unpin this for now. We can say message type, which is going to implement the interface. I'm sorry, implement, or it's going to, be going to add the using directive. And we're going to say, this is formal. And we'll do the same thing. We'll copy this and paste it down here, and we'll change this to relaxed. And now we can come over here and we can say that 
message type dot relaxed. And there you go. So now you have a, a better way of selecting this instead of just a string, you can actually use an enum and put this value here. Now I chose to do this in this project type in the Blazor web app for a reason. Because if we go to our components, let's go to the counter component. And we want to inject our keyed service. How do we do that? Well, right now, there's not a way to inject it when your code is on the same page as your razor syntax. However, if you move your code, control dot here to extract blocked code behind. So now we have our code behind. We have just our counter now and the code behind for the counter we can now inject it with that keyed service. So we can say, let's create a prop. Whoops, I am outside of the, uh, the class. There we go. And we're going to have our I, what was it called? Our I interaction message. There we go. And we'll call this messages. But when we are inside of a, um, a code behind for a component, we inject services. So we say inject like so, but this is a keyed service. So we say key equals, and then we can say our enum, which is messages dot message type dot, and then say relaxed. And now we have injected our, our class, our implementation into our code behind for the counter component using this inject syntax. Again, this will not work like in the way right here where we can inject, we can say at inject. It won't work here for a keyed service. So if you were going to do keyed services for now, then you need to do the code behind and inject them into the properties like so. And we cover more about that in my Blazor from start to finish course, but about how to inject properties into your code behind and how to use code behinds. But just note that for right now, you have to do that in the code behind. This is going to change probably in .NET 9, uh, but that's just something that right now we're adding this in or Microsoft's adding this in and it's not yet ready for the inject right on your, your page with your code. So that's how to work with keyed services in dependency injection in .NET 8.